Hi, I'm Stephanie from the Wilton Test Kitchen and today I'm going to show you how to make a classic yellow cake. This cake is a great foundation because it has excellent structure and texture for making gorgeous layer cakes. It also plays very well with a lot of different icings and fillings. But on its own, it has great flavor from the butter and vanilla, it has a rich golden color from the eggs, and it also has a tender crumb. The recipe I'm going to show you today will hit all those notes and will remind you of a classic American style birthday cake. I do want to let you know that this will be different from a box mix cake. Those mixes tend to be lighter and fluffier. The cake we're making today will definitely be denser, but it'll be richer in flavor and it won't have any artificial taste because we're baking from scratch. Before we get started, I do have a few pointers to give you to make sure this recipe works for you. First, make sure your ingredients are measured correctly. It's really important that the ratios are correct because that will affect the outcome of your baked good. For more information on how to measure your ingredients, check out our video, How to Measure Ingredients Correctly, on Wilton.com. Second, make sure that your milk, butter, and eggs are all at room temperature. This makes such a difference in the texture of your cake. Cakes baked with ingredients at room temperature are lighter and have a more tender texture, so don't skip this step. Lastly, use the right bakeware. For this recipe, I'm gonna use two eight-inch round aluminum pans. I love these pans because they have a nice straight side, not tapered. You can use whatever you have at home. If you have something that looks like this, keep in mind that the sides will be a little bit tapered, and if it's dark coating, you may want to reduce the bake time and temperature just a little bit, because dark coated pans tend to bake your cakes just a little bit faster. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. I'm gonna preheat my oven while I'm mixing my ingredients so it has enough time to get up to the right temperature. Even when my oven gets to the right temperature, I like to let it stay for about 10 minutes so I have a nice even temperature when I put my cake in. Having an oven thermometer really helps too. The first thing we're gonna do is cut parchment circles to line our pans. Now I'm gonna use my pan as a guide and I'm gonna trace a circle in my parchment paper. Now we're gonna cut this out. While I'm cutting it out, I'm gonna be really careful to kinda of stay inside the lines, this way I don't get any pencil on my cake. And just in case, when I put the parchment circle in my pan, I'll put it pencil side down so it's not touching the cake. I have one parchment circle done. I'm gonna go ahead and do a second one because we have two cake pans for this recipe. I'm gonna grease the pans with some Bake Easy. You can use any non-stick spray. You may wonder why some recipes tell you to both grease and line your pans with parchment paper. The nonstick spray really helps release the cake from the sides. It also helps the parchment paper stick to the bottom. The parchment paper is what really gives you that nice, clean release from the pan, and then it peels right off your cake. The next step is optional, but I'm gonna use Bake Even Strips. Bake Even Strips cool the sides of your pan so it lessens the dome and gives you a more even bake. To use these, what you wanna do is you wanna take the strip, fit it around your pan, Soak them for about five minutes in ice cold water. When that's done, you wanna remove the extra water, but make sure you don't wring them out. You don't want them sopping wet, but you do wanna retain some of that cold water in there and then put them back around your pan. Now that I'm done with my prep, let's move on to our dry ingredients. I'm gonna to sift together the cake flour, baking powder, and salt. You'll notice in this recipe that I'm using cake flour. Cake flour has a lower protein content than all-purpose flour, giving your cake less strength and structure, but making your cake much lighter. If you can't find cake flour, you can use all-purpose flour, but just be warned, your cake might be a little bit chewier. A lot of baking recipes call for the addition of salt. Salt is actually a really important ingredient because it helps enhance the flavor. It also cuts a little bit of that sweetness. It's really important to sift together your ingredients. Not only does this aerate the mixture and remove large clumps, but it also helps to evenly distribute your leavener, which in this case is baking powder. This ensures a more even bake with no large pockets of air. Here's a helpful tip. Sift your ingredients directly onto parchment paper. This will make it easier to add it to your bowl later on. Now that I'm done sifting my ingredients, I'm gonna fold in the edges of my parchment paper. This will help make sure that I don't drop any flour as I move it off to the side. Now I'm gonna to cream together the butter and the sugar. For this step, you'll wanna use a stand mixer with a paddle attachment. You could also use a hand mixer, just be sure to use the beater attachment. For this next step, you'll wanna make sure that you're using softened butter. You can take the butter out of the refrigerator about 30 to 60 minutes beforehand, so when you're ready to use it, it'll be softened, but definitely not melted. A good test is to make an indent with your finger, and if you can easily make the impression, you're good to go. 
This next step is really about aerating your ingredients. It will help the butter melt more slowly in the oven, which makes for a fluffier cake. I'm going to beat these ingredients at a medium high speed for about three to five minutes, making sure to scrape down the sides of the bowl often to make sure there's no clumps at the bottom. This process is going to create nice pockets of air and sugar throughout your mixture. Make sure you don't cut your creaming time too short. You really want those nice fluffy peaks. A good little test is to take a little bit and rub it between your fingers. You should barely feel any sugar granules. Now we're ready to add the eggs and the vanilla. Just like the butter in the previous step, make sure your eggs are at room temperature. This will keep the butter from rehardening with the introduction of a cold ingredient. Also, make sure to add your eggs one at a time to keep from introducing too much liquid at once, which could break down your perfectly fluffy creamed mixture. Vanilla is a classic flavor for a yellow cake, so that's what I'm using today. Now that the eggs and vanilla are incorporated, it's time to add in our flour mixture and milk. Before we get started, just a friendly reminder, do not overmix your batter. I cannot stress this enough. To have an evenly mixed batter, we're gonna add our milk and flour alternately, starting and ending with our flour mixture and adding our flour mixture in three additions. A helpful little hint when you're adding flour with parchment paper, fold over the edge of your parchment paper to secure the back. This way, no flour will fall out the back while you're adding in your flour. Now watch how I'm actually mixing this just enough until the ingredients are incorporated. You do not want to overmix your batter because that overdevelops your gluten, which makes for a very tough cake. You'll also want to keep as much air in your mixture as possible, and mixing tends to deflate your batter. You'll end up with a short, dense cake. You may want to scrape down the sides of the bowl just in case any flour gets stuck to the side. Now you want to get the batter into your pans and into the oven as soon as possible. The reason for this is the leavener starts to work as soon as it's added to the wet ingredients. So in that case, it's the baking powder. So we want to get it into the oven as soon as possible. Now that my batter is done, I'm going to bring my pans back in. You want to divide your batter evenly among the two pans. The best way to do this exactly is with a kitchen scale, but if you don't have one, it's okay to just kind of eyeball it. It's a thicker batter, so you'll want to use a spatula to smooth it out. And a good little test to tell if they're even is a toothpick test. Insert a toothpick in the center of each cake, and if they're even, you're good to go. This will ensure that your cakes bake at the same time. I like to use the angle spatula, this way you can really get into the pan, but it keeps your hand out of your batter. Now we're gonna tap these on the counter just lightly. This will remove any air bubbles, so we're not stuck with any large air pockets. I'm going to place these on the center rack, this way it ensures even heating on the top and bottom. I'm also gonna make sure that there's a little bit of space between the cakes and they're not too close to the sides. This will ensure a nice even bake for your cakes. It's been about 15 minutes, I'm gonna check on my cakes. They're really starting to rise. I'm gonna rotate them so they bake evenly. It's been about 30 minutes, I'm gonna check on my cakes. A good test to see if they're done is to insert a cake tester or a toothpick into the center. If it comes out clean, then it's done. If not, put it back in for a few more minutes. Another test is to lightly touch the center of your cake. If it springs back, you're good to go. These cakes look perfect, nice golden brown color, very level, and it smells delicious. You definitely get those hints of butter and vanilla coming through. I'm gonna have these set on a cooling rack for about 10 to 15 minutes. Make sure to set a timer, because if they cool completely in the pan, they'll stick. Let's go ahead and remove these cakes from the pan. They're still a bit warm, so be careful. We're gonna need a cake board to do this. So take a cake board, place it on top of the cake, and gently flip the cake over while supporting the bottom. Remove the cake pan, and then gently peel back the parchment paper. See how flat the bottom of the cake is? And this color, this is exactly what you should be looking for. Once you're done with this, go ahead and take the cooling grid, place it back on top of the cake, and gently flip your cake back over and allow it to cool completely on the cooling grid. It's important that they're on a cooling grid, that way the air can circulate underneath. Allow them to cool for about one to two hours before adding any filling or icing. Otherwise, your filling or icing could melt from residual heat and you don't want that. Once they're done cooling, place them on a cake circle. This classic yellow cake is now ready for filling, icing, or whatever you want. Even though it's flavorful all on its own, you can either add fruit filling, cover it with chocolate icing, and it works just as well. One of my favorite ways to ice this cake is with our classic vanilla buttercream recipe. It's guaranteed to take you back to those special homemade birthday cakes you had as a kid, and it's really worth the extra effort. 
I had so much fun teaching you this recipe today. I hope you have just as much fun making it. Happy baking.